So since the mid 1990s uh, till today, it's 2021, what has life been like for you? Did you keep with it? Oh yeah. Minimalization is so free because you don't have stuff that owns you anymore. And you can just go and do and just be. And that's the ultimate as far as I can see. Mm -hmm. So what have you done? Be bopped here and there? Yeah, I ended up getting stuck in Vegas for five years. <laughs> How'd that happen? Well, I was in New York and the friend I was seeing there had another friend who was in Vegas and claimed to be starting a audiovisual company. Well, I have a background in that, so I thought, well, I'll go down there and go to work for, for them. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your dog? No, that's my friend's dog, but she, she's in my heart, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So I, I went down there, and they left me kind of stranded at the bus stop for about three days, instead of coming and picking me up as soon as I got there, which I thought was rather bizarre, but it was all right. I managed to get through it. And when we finally got to what she called her office, all I could see was a whole row of phones. So it looked like it was a solicitation thing rather than an AV type activity. And I got to thinking that really looks like it might be a scam and I didn't actually know the person myself, so I opted out. Well, I had used the last of my money to get there, <laughs> and there's there's no way out of Vegas. The cops don't let you hitchhike. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a mess. So I ended up living under the spaghetti bowl, which is, like a stack of freeway mess and staying at shelters, you know, because you can stay a week and then you have to be gone for a while and then the next month you can come back for another week. And so I bounced back and forth between the, the shelter and under the overpass. That was a pretty bizarre thing because Tweakers lived under the overpass and they collected all kinds of shit and spread it out everywhere. So it was like walking through a minefield to get to my camp. <laughs> because they were always shifting stuff around so it was never in the same place. So you had to just kind of carefully pick your way through to keep from falling on your butt. <laughs> and did you ever, were you ever on drugs or into drugs? Oh yeah, but that was when I was much younger. So more like a partying thing. Yeah. And I didn't want anything to do with the tweakers as far as anything they were doing or who they were. <laughs> so it was just kind of weird. Did you drink? No. I drank when I was younger, yeah. But it, no. I, I haven't drank in 22 years. So. And what made you quit? I discovered energy work. And the energy sees alcohol as a poison, which basically it is. And so it ejects it in this path of least resistance. And that's the same way that it went in. So it's not fun to be down on your hands and knees puking your guts out all the time. So I figured I had a decision to make. And it was a no-brainer because the energy work is so much more fulfilling than drinking. <laughs> you know, so. What can you describe the energy work that you're talking about? 
Well, the first one I got into was Reiki. And that's where you're gathering energy from creator, the universe, or whatever you want to call it. Bringing it in through your crown chakra, through your heart chakra, and out through your hand chakras to help people heal themselves. And I found that that was something that I got a great deal of joy out of. Much more than drinking. <laughs> so it was a, an easy transition. Have you helped people heal with it? Yeah. What do you do with it? Talk about it. Well, I, I was on Second Life for a few years. And what's Second Life? Uh, it's a... I suppose you could call it a computer game, but it's not really a game game. It's a site where you have sims, which are basically continents of land, which are, you can terraform and shape any shape you want. And then you can put trees on it. And you can build houses and all kinds of stuff. And you can build bikes and cars and anything you want and they have all kinds of neat little activities like they have live music that people perform on it and there are, you have little uh, avatars that represent you which you can make to be anything you want most people were choosing young good-looking Avatars. I chose an old, wrinkled up man, and I put a long beard and long white hair on it. <laughs> because I didn't really want to be young and beautiful. I wanted to be who I was, you know? <laughs> be and who I felt when like inside. Were you on a computer? That was after I got to, uh, let's see, where did I start? In Montana. Oh, you had a home in Montana. Yeah. And you all, and, but that's when you did your, your summer in the woods there, correct? Yeah. Or three different summers, but you had a home. Okay. Yeah. And, um, okay. So that's when you started with Second Life. Yeah. And so I, I got a sim and I built a, a healing center on it and they have little, uh, activity balls that you can place for different activities so that when somebody comes up they can click on that and their avatar goes and occupies that space and I had meditation balls so that people could click on it and it would set them down in the lotus position and they, they could sit and meditate and I had trees all around and everything so it was really kind of neat and I, I got to be friends with a lot of people that were on there because I would be on that thing day and night because I was talking to people all over, from all over the world on it. So their time on was a lot different than normal people would where I was. So I'd be on like all night long, you know, just talking to people across the other side of the world. But the people that would come to the healing center, I discovered that the majority of the people on Second Life were either housebound because of injury or illness and so they were living vicariously because they could go skiing they could do all these neat physical things on second life that they couldn't do in their physical life and so they, that was a, a good outlet for them and part of the energy work is distance work meaning I don't have to be where the person I'm working with is I just have to connect with their higher self. And so there was one of the performers, a musician, was in Oklahoma City. And she and I got to be really good friends on Second Life. And so we ended up exchanging phone numbers and actually talking over the phone. And she called me one night, just all worried and stuff because she had, she was supposed to about a week later, go into the hospital to have a tumor removed from her breast. And she was really worried about it and knew I did the energy work. And so she asked me to help her with that. So I said, okay, we can do some work on that. So I started doing it on a really regular basis. And 
the morning after her appointment, she called me up and says, guess what? <laughs> they went to do a last minute x-ray so that they would know where exactly where it was to go take care of it and they couldn't find it. So it ended up being the energy work had gotten rid of the tumor for her. And that's the kind of thing that the that's energy work That's incredible. Wow. And that's why it's so fulfilling, you know. Mm -hmm. And the neat thing is, I'm not doing it. I'm just the conduit to supply the energy and they and their higher self do the actual work.